Okay, so we did a creek walk at uh, 10, 10 a.m., and I wish you were all there, but uh, unfortunately, you can't all make it at the same time. So the first uh, creek uh, walk poet that's going to be up here is Mario Ellis Hill. Hello, everyone. My name is Mario Ellis Hill. I am from Sacramento, California. Come to grace the stage here. Um, I came here 20 years ago, and I'm back today. This is entitled, An Open Letter to a Midtown Community Garden. Dear plants, critters, and most honorable Mother Earth, we regret to inform you, just in case you haven't already noticed, that you are to be downsized as recycled for the betterment of mankind. We understand that our relationship has spanned half a millennium but it is time for us to move on, as has been mandated by money and developmental greed. We assume that you've appreciated our caregiving, watering when roots were thirsty, weeding out malevolent elements in your environment with our hands, and supporting with stiff sticks when wilted. In fact, if it weren't for us, you would have been extinct decades ago. Our time has come. Nature no longer fills our cup. We live with content and contempt with our concrete ATMs, SUVs, and newer superhighways. ASAP, all plants will be uprooted, dug up, and replaced with landscape slave plants and shrubs. All insects and nematodes will be eliminated and exterminated and hated in our upcoming dirt-free blacktop lots. Any mollusks and ro rodents will be prosecuted with the severest of penalties. Dandelions, psst, forget it. All dirt will be tamed with force if necessary and subdued by cement and floor tiles. If you have any complaints, objections, riots, or questions, please send them in typewritten to our big, big steel and cement buildings. Our environmental relations department will take mm, eight to 10 working years to process your claim. Again, we apologize for the inconvenience to you and the convenience to us. <laughs> Uh, signed forever forward, backwards never, dead developers and entrepreneurs against dirt and maim money makers against Mother Earth. Uh, my second and last poem is entitled Saga of the River Otter. I rule in the pools over schools of fish and shells in my grip. I splish and splash when I dash with the hunter's cash, when I crash my dotted seashells over his spy glass. I roll once, I roll twice, I roll until I leave my imprint. Hitting lucky digits every time, so give up the shrimp, you pimp player hater of a mayor. You're just a slayer of our ecosystem's layers. You see, he wants to erect complex dams to plug up our river tub. He's got the nerve to turn up his nostril holes that snub. I'll stub my bottlenose bubbles against his gills. He thought we had no skills, but we showed that eel we were the real deal. The pyrotechnic appeal of hectic monetary schematics are the cause of all of his dramatic antics of hydroelectric pyramids slid smack into our aquatic villages. 
emergency. Urgent emergency was the glyphs sent to the big fish from Atlantis, the sea otters from Pacific to Atlantic, the beavers of twig tenements about the atrocities happening in our watery arteries. So beware all river otters. Living la vida rio is getting harder. The developers and their money are becoming a bother. Still possessed with a man as pest destiny of their forefathers. But now I'm not going out, getting caught up in the jam of their scam. It's time to take back our rivers and lands and damn their damn plans and save our rivers and lands. So give me a show of your paws if you're down for the cause. Give me a show of your paws, yeah, if you're down for the cause. Give me a show of your paws if you're down for the cause. Cause this is the saga of the River Otter. I'm Mario Ellis Hill, thank you very much. Okay, hey, next up we have uh, Claire Blotter, and she's uh, from uh, over there on the coast of, uh, by San Rafael area, Mill Valley. Mill Valley, and she's going to read you some poems here. Here she comes. Thank you all for coming out for poetry today, and especially to Joyce and Chris and everybody who organized this event today. Um, I live in, on... Um, Miwok land near the Mount Tamalpais watershed. And I've been walking the watershed and just listening to the creatures and the wind. And I thought I'd read three poems today. One to celebrate the greenery of the watershed. One to wake us up again to the continued long struggle against global warming. And then a last one, a metaphoric water poem. in the deep green. I love the deep green forest. I would have loved it for its scent alone. Pine, madrone, sequoia, eucalyptus groves. I love the thick, stiff layers of leaves crunching underfoot, the coal-eyed darkness, earth upturned yet free of probing human hands. I love secret foreign creatures, Moist moss, gold flecked lichen, cracks in one slick mud, velvety beetles bulging beneath stone, the red hourglass on the widow's stomach. I love dark hidden green, burnt black as an oven, the terrible power of decay, how water unbinds cells in grooves and hollows. I would have loved the buds alone for their mysterious movements, faint midnight beating of earth's tiniest hearts, oddly comforting to those who sit and listen among fallen branches, delicate fungi and fern, all that quietly meets what creeps in darkness. Thank you. This next one is a talk yell poem. Every time I put my hand up in the air, I'd like you to yell, waketh. It's kind of a, a medieval wake up. So let's practice. Waketh. 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 There we go. Good. A prayer and plea. On this full potent day, as the sun rises slowly in the darkest night, when the rain refuseth to fall, where crops wither on vines, what crimes and who hath committed such blasphemy, where even the grass cannot push us through parched earth? What seeds refuseth to sprout in crumbling dirt, and where does sin begin when we do not hear earth crying out, do not save birds and creatures falling like stone, nor hear tiniest moans of mice near flooding rivers and empty springs? Wake up! I say to what has been created unabated by dams, pollution, and habitats, wait. I want to hear it. Waketh to a world of hurricanes and floodings that startle sleep. Waketh, 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 while we still remember the glory of sun dappling verdant grass, earth pouring forth its bountiful gift, even now, waketh. 
our hearts till our hands moveth swiftly before earth, water, light disintegrate in the gathering dark. And this last poem is called Water. I like to sing. I mean, I really like singing, but I wouldn't consider myself a singer. I mean, I'm not a singing teacher. I couldn't make a living singing. And I like to dance, and I'm a pretty good dancer, but I wouldn't consider myself a dancer. I mean, I'm not a dance teacher. And I like to talk. I mean, I really like talking, but I wouldn't consider myself a talker. I mean, I'm not a talking teacher. They never pay me just to talk. I'm a woman. I mean, I look like a woman. I have the body of a woman. But sometimes, sometimes I just don't act like a woman acts. Sometimes I act like a man. But I'm not a man, and I don't feel like a man. But I don't feel like a woman either, at least not the way my mother said women feel. So I'm not really a woman, and I'm not really a man. And sometimes, sometimes I think I'm somewhere in between. So I'm not really a woman, and I'm not really a man, and sometimes I think I'm somewhere in between. I live in the country. I like the quiet and the trees. But sometimes I need stimulation. Sometimes I come to the city for a while. But I'm not really a city person, and I'm not really a country person. And I find myself alone more and more lately, driving back and forth between the city and the country. And I'm driving, driving, driving. I'm driving hard now trying to find a way to get home. You know, I like to sing. I really like singing, but I wouldn't consider myself a singer. I mean, I'm not a singing teacher. And I'm not an Indian. I love the Indian way of life, close to the earth in harmony with nature. But it's the year 2024, and you could say I'm a white person. But I'm not really white. I don't like a lot of things white people do, but I'm not indigenous either. I'm not Native American. You could say I'm American. I pay taxes, but I don't own a cell phone. And I find myself alone more and more lately, driving back and forth between the city and the country. And I'm driving, driving, driving. I'm driving hard now trying to find a way to get home. I have a sister. I love my sister, but I'm not like my sister. I like my sister, but I'm not myself with my sister. When I'm with my sister, I'm sort of a part of my sister. And just last week, my sister told me, just last week, my sister told me about Lucifer how he's this body out there, and how he's trying to steal our souls. And I said, I said, devils not just out there, Kathy. I said, devils not just out there, Kathy. He's traveling somewhere between us. And I find myself alone more and more lately, driving, driving, driving back and forth between the city and the country, and I'm driving, I'm driving hard now, trying to find a way to the water, trying to find a way to get home. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Claire. Okay, next reader up is uh, Gregory uh, Cortez from the Ecology Center, uh, and he's going to be reading us some poems here. Here he comes. Hello, 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 everybody. Can we clap it up for all the poets that have touched the stage so far? Beautiful. Um, what an honor and joy to get to be here and share space with y'all. I'm going to share two poems with y'all. This first poem um, is in celebration of, of this space and the student, the long lineage of student activists that have um, made Berkeley, Berkeley. Um, so it's called Student Movement Absidarian. After we returned to our campuses, the smoke of bombed buses still clinging to our collars from a freedom ride gone south, perhaps we debriefed, deliberating how best to bring the struggle home. We knew education would either liberate us or weave us into a burning flag, like we knew anything could be a classroom. So we gathered atop cop cars, renaming our parks after the people, 
honoring the land by remembering how it thrived before pigs tear it down. The fence making private the open field, the state's jurisdiction clubbing loose the instructor's jaw. California armed its clan with bayonets, riot gear, a eugenics inscribed law. Fascists learned the art of genocide from us. Yet the student body fights back. March, boycott, teach in, a brick careening through glass, nasturtiums blooming from the barrel of a gun. Why not a gun? We threw our bodies upon the gears of the necropolitic and then threw a party for self-defense. Theses sharpened into 10 point plans. How else to quiet the severed foot? The wheezing lung, the rumbling belly, the cannibalistic rot of empire than a program with our survival at the center of it. And when they tried to label us a threat for how we smuggled revolution like free breakfast underneath their snouts, it was too late. Our student movements, a virus in the system, a contagious song, a conveyor belt, redistributing the wealth, rewriting the law, starting a school of our own. Don't call us exceptional or vanguards or even top of our class. We who study the years like a jump rope, beads smacking the pavement, counting down to zero, swing clap, swing clap, jump in, jump in, jump in. In this last poem, um, as we're gathered here, you know, thinking about watersheds and the environment, um, you know, uh, we also have to be talking about what are the contributors, you know, what are the systems of violence that, that make it so, you know, the air is increasingly erupting in flames, you know, and our waters are more polluted. And we can't talk about that without talking about colonial violence and war and genocide. So it's a poem called uh, Semiotics. One, picture a tree and the mind conjures myriad shapes of branch, canopy, leaf. My first time in Los Angeles, I sit in awe in the back of my father's hatchback as palm trees stretch a wild hallway of perennial fingers cradling a cloudless sky. The wind blows and the weeping willow in my grandpa's backyard crackles with delight, an emerald and shimmering skirt lifted in the breeze. As a child, I swung by vine beneath its hem until one night the wind blew so hard it knocked the willow to the ground and I was left with all its weeping. Two. Everybody has a tree called tree. Nobody's tree is the same. Signifier in the one syllable speech, signified in the letters we whittled into its frame. Three, if semiotics is the study of signs and their meanings, the word genocide is a litany of failed address. Four, say California and mean shell mounds leveled for Ikeas, scalps traded in for gold. Say Germany and mean 200 bombed synagogues, the ash of millions assimilated into one. Say Israel and mean 400 villages exiled, 10,000 children in the ground in only five months. Five, what happens when we don't call a tree a tree? I say poplar, I say olive, I say oak and mean the same thing. Wood splintered into a common tongue, this burning bush, this knotted root of despair. My people, we know fire and the scent of stolen flesh. How they reduce our slaughter to slogans like manifest destiny, a great migration, resettlement, defense. Six, I want to believe in a phrase like ceasefire, like land back, like reparations. I want to find shelter underneath that arbor. I want to witness our descendants and their new words for caring for the wound. Instead, my throat hardens into bark for every blood soaked white cloth carried across my screen. Seven, O oh, tree of life. O oh, sky woman seeding the turtles back. O oh, old and new names for the wind and the leaves and the gardeners that tend them. Dear God, how do we explain how we cut down the forest to make wood for the caskets? Eight, after the hurricane knocked down our willow, my grandfather planted tomato seeds into the loosened soil. Weeks later, the dirt bruised green and blushed red, a garden flowering in the wake. Nine. After Israel outlawed the Palestinian flag, the people invented new language for reclaiming the land. They lifted watermelon slices into the air. 10, in an alternate universe, the air grew roots. The air closed like the palms of an ancient God. The air refused to let another bomb, another settlement desecrate the ground. Thank you.
Okay, we're going to uh, try some something a little bit new here we haven't done before. It's called improvisation, <laughs> and we'll see how it works. My name's Chris Olander with Barry and his band, and Sharon Coleman and Renko are going to dance. And so I think we got it here. I think we're going. Okay. <laughs> this is called To the Earth. To the earth. She is the weaver of mysterious fabrics, spinning rainbow threads from her crystal alignments, stitching images in her materials made, designing colors you have come to rely on, softening your private destinies, intimate labor. The clarity brews from her sanctuary's herbs. She serves the knowledge you will need to nourish your blood's consciousness. Under the apple trees is leaves singing prophecy. She will answer all of your want of questions and guide you safely through your shadows to her secret tree, wisdom, singing gratitude. She is the beautiful morning walk in the park's cool sunshine between the cloud freshets, the hug and surprise kiss in sunlight's rain. She moves through the polished white boulders and the Yuba River's granite gleaming corridors. The morning's light glazing the cliff's ridge rock, arrowing through silver fur, sparkling her steps, gathering spirits into her gratitude. Her heart beats the springs in the alder grove with necklaces cascading the crystal rivulets. Myriad waterfalls ribbon her garden's horsetail, the cone flowers, and the tiger lilies. Her sunlit maple leaves fall from the limber limbs and etch glyphs in the cliff's granite gallery. Blue jewels, the bedrock's polished sculpture, and the rock's deepest pools. And her eyes glow with the Yuba Canyon's worship pools as light. Sacred arrows pierce the clear heart's depth, and awaken love in its golden pools as gratitude. She speaks the syllables of forest and mountain, braiding meanings with the river's crystal, understands what a woman wants. The provider for the body's knowledge and what you need to know to survive and thrive in the idiosyncrasies of tyranny's power. She will guide you along the trail's truth of ancient ones who have passed this way. And you will do well to offer the gifts of the heart. The earth's bounty is in her open palms. It is the wealth providing your health Fulfilling the want of a companion's warmth. Her river forgives your deepest sorrows. And her winter sun warms your lips for song. And her eyes will give you the will to sing. She places the natural jewels in your palms when you walk beside her. Glowing beauty. 
the chaparral make way for her passing spirit. She will lead you along the ripples of riparian meadows to your destination that you have never realized until suddenly she will hand you the gift of love. Thank you for Sharon and Ranko. Thank you for Barry Finnerty and his marvelous band of magic. Thank you very much.